you would have invested 89 lakhs and you would have ended at 3.78 crores with 10000 bucks and i have my own conspiracy theory why this is not taught because think about this techie right why will he work for you after 10 12 years <laughs> insecurities associated with your job itself compounding is an exponential curve you are actually losing money gradually so the real inflation in my view is way more than what this government numbers is most of the people should not even be looking at stocks at all the thing here is doing it every month it's a very very bad investment decision how much are you willing to compromise on your uh, lifestyle today to invest here for a better future Hi Rajneesh, Hi. welcome on board to Attitude Makeover. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for this conversation. Um, I want to start off with a brief introduction about you. From corporate world, you moved to <laughs> yeah. managing uh, or trading and stock trading. Yeah, I would not call it trading. To be honest, I mean trading is one aspect of it. It's primarily around uh, investing, which is obviously for a long term. Um, this is something that I was quite interested in for quite some time. Um, so, so just to give you my background, uh, I recently quit Adobe around a year back, but but uh, long, long ago, or perhaps ten years back, I was working for Yahoo Finance as their product manager. and that is where you know i kind of really really got interested in in the world of investment because yahoo finance is all about stocks and portfolios etc it's, it's 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 a beautiful product um so that is where i really got interested in, in investing and that is where i would suggest i would say i really kind of uh went a little deep into understanding uh investment from uh, a no ba- no background whatsoever in finance right uh now when i look look back at my journey what i realized is that i just used what i knew so mm-hmm. for example i don't understand fundamental investing which is about you know reading about the company trying to understand the balance sheet and then trying to figure, take a decision whether i should invest or not instead of that i just used quantitative techniques to kind of go ahead uh, with my own investment right so trying to figure out uh, how do you mix multiple assets for instance there are stocks then there is gold uh the etfs mutual funds etc to kind of uh, so the lot of experimentations were done and then finally concluded on a model and that is something that i've stuck to and it has worked well for me um so yeah i quit working almost a year back now it's my full time job just to manage my money mm-hmm. and as far as trading is concerned i do futures and options but that is not something that we will discuss today because that's a very advanced topic and uh, again not something that you can just get into we have spent a lot of time uh, so i use uh, some of those future futures and options for even for hedging my own investments right so there are times when you know that markets are going to tank mm-hmm. uh and that is where futures and options can help you in kind of hedging your portfolio but those are advanced topics so today what we'll do is just talk about Basic. the ba- basics of investing and how someone who has never done it can actually uh go ahead and and uh, start investing and why it is important to invest how early did you start well as i said i mean i have been investing serious non serious i've been doing it for quite a while quite quite some time so maybe 20 years back uh, is when i started uh was not super disciplined mm. is how what i would say uh i don't think i had the discipline to you know put x amount of rupees every every month which is how it should really be yeah. uh but that is not what I, i was able to do at that point in time didn't have this understanding but now when i look back uh it it makes a very significant difference if you are disciplined the interest the the returns that you will get you can be very conservative and yet come out you know shining mm-hmm. 
right? So it's not about just 30% return per annum or 25% return per annum is chasing some wild things like those. Uh, if you are really, really disciplined, uh, putting in money month on month on predefined assets rather than, you know, some, some catching that stock or this stock or that stock. Uh, in fact, I would recommend most of the people should not even be looking at stocks at all, right? Um, there are better asset classes. There are this mutual fund which a professional is managing. Um, you know, there are ETFs. Uh, those are the kind of things that one should look at rather than jumping straight up into, into stocks. That is where what happens is when they think about market exposure, people think of buying stocks. Mm -hmm. And the reality is 95% of the people are incapable of buying stocks. And that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the reality, right? Uh, people don't understand the fundamentals of stock investing. It's best left to someone who knows it, right? So if you buy a mutual fund, you will be far better off. Uh, as well, as against, you know, just your uncle said, this is company is great and you go throw some money into it. Um, that is not uh, that is not something that I would recommend. Um, so what we'll do today is just walk you through, a, you know, very, very basic uh, framework of how you should start about start about it. And uh, some of the, you know, uh, we'll talk about. So there is one aspect called return. But what is another aspect which is very important, which people don't talk about, is the risk associated in getting that return. Mm. That is also something that we'll touch upon. Fair. Yeah? I think one, what I wanted to start off with is last time we talked about relationship with money. Yeah. And in respect of what age group you're in, what generation you're in, um, the fear or the sort of mixed feeling you walk in with managing money mm -hmm. is across all age groups. Yeah. And it's also across genders, although the men appear to be more informed than the women in some cases, uh, not a generalized statement, it's unique for each case, but that seems to be uh, one pattern that we observe. So today's intent is to see, can I keep it simple yeah. and get one on a disciplined way of saving, where you're sure of a low risk, but a high return. Yes, I would, I would, I would call it a very decent return. Mm -hmm. uh, see, every return is comes at a certain risk, mm -hmm. right? So if lower the risk, lower the return, and so you need to have a very optimal balance. You should not be extremely risk averse either, mm -hmm. you know. Otherwise, ours the return is not going to be very interesting. And we will also talk about inflation and how that eats up into into the returns, right? So there needs to be a very fair balance between return and risk, right? And that is something that we will discuss today. I want to start off with a bunch of very basic questions, which are like very commonly asked by folks, especially in the Gen Z and the millennials, and I think even in our age group, yeah. right? Uh, first one is, why do many people find managing money intimidating? And is there any advice from you on how to overcome it? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, what you're saying is absolutely correct. I mean, I, I have friends my age who, who have never invested their own money, right? So they will either give it to someone or hope and pray that whatever that they are into by default, for example, stock options that are given by the company, they hope and pray that it works. Uh, they don't themselves uh, are going to think about how to diversify their portfolio. Uh, as long as someone's taking care of it, they're very comfortable. And these are very, very smart guys, mm. right? Uh, despite that, it's not a function of how smart you are. Uh, it's just that a lot of people are extremely uncomfortable managing money. And my sense is, you know, when it comes to managing money, uh, the obvious assets are, you know, the traditional ones have been like fixed deposits, mm. right? Outside of that, uh, you would look at maybe government bonds, but understand government bonds, right? How many people really understand how government bond, bonds work? Third is again gold, which is which is again a very traditional uh, asset class. The fourth is stocks, mm -hmm. right? But the trouble with stocks, especially in India, is the, the kind of background that we've had, right? Uh, it's been looked at as gambling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that is primarily because of, you know, uh, bad decisions that were made by the, maybe the previous generation. Uh, or I, I don't know, I mean, but it's, it's just looked down upon, yeah. right? Uh, in reality, that is not the case because when we talk about investing in the market, it is not only about going and picking stocks. 
there you are bound to go wrong. There's a very high probability you will go wrong, right? Uh, and that is why you have better investment uh, in terms of mutual funds, which is done by professionals. And we will also go through, you know, uh, the typical returns of uh, mutual funds on a long-term basis, right? 10 years plus basis, what have, and there are various kinds of mutual funds and how they have performed. And we will we'll take a look at that. Um, so, but the thing is, these things are not, A, they are not taught when, when you should have been taught about it. I mean, it's, it's not taught to you at all. I mean, you will learn second order derivative in your school, but you will have no sense of compounding, right? Even though you know the formula, yeah. <laughs> right? About yeah, yeah, interest, compound yes, interest, but, that but you don't know the practical usage yeah. of it, right? Yeah. Uh, and that is where the problem lies uh, in the practical usage of, of uh, those simple maths that you were taught earlier. And especially personal finance is a subject I have no, I don't understand why this is not taught in the school or early college level. I mean, let's be honest, if you're working, your primary goal is, is financial freedom. And if you're not investing time to grow your own money, then you're not doing justice with, the, with that income, right? Uh, and again, this is a relation that comes late. So I'm not going to say that, you know, this is something that dawned upon me when I was 25 or something. No, that was not the case. Um, but I really believe that this, is, this is a subject is not taught uh, at all. So that is, that is one problem that you have no awareness. And most likely your previous generation was also not aware of it. So what I have typically noticed is if you come from a business family background, they really, really understand the concept of money very, very well. But most of like us uh, who don't come from that background and, you know, the, the it takes years to even understand the fundamentals of investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will talk about compounding, which is... You know, the, the, the thing with compounding is the earlier you start, the better off you are, right? And we will see how, why, why that is the case. Uh, most people realize it too late. Very late. Very late. And if this is something that people would have realized when they just started working, I mean, their life would be so much better off. Right. You know? There's a lot of, uh, and I think that we'll have as a follow through in the next one, in the next episode. But there's an impact on your mental health as well. <laughs> your numbers are not doing great and you know just surviving through day to day needs and demands yes uh, and there are i think i think life is getting much more complex these days right so there is most of the people working have no surety of a job either so your job could be a high paying job today and gone tomorrow oh. right so uh, it is bound to create stress and if you don't have that kitty with you it is going to be extremely stressful because what happens is when when your salary increases, your uh, your spend, lifestyle. your lifestyle elevation and all of that happy that the lifestyle creep is is something that is bound to happen. Um, so unless you are like uh, uh, pure sadhu, it's very difficult to stay out of that uh, that zone, right? So you'll need a bigger car and a bigger house and and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's bound to be a problem. So that's another reason why you need to have the skitty, right? And and again, we will also talk about you know balancing between uh, you know what needs to be, what needs to be saved versus you know uh, spend, yeah. etc. Uh, and that's again something very very personal, but but we know why it is important, right? Now we know. I mean, world is getting much more complex, and uh, most people working private jobs like us. It's, it's, it's not it's not like a government job right and you don't have a and you don't have a social security Correct. and uh, there is no pension Correct. right so these are facts Correct. so what I have, what is happening is a lot of people a lot of especially the young generation i'm seeing that blindly aping west without realizing some of these nitty gritties right that you don't have a social security mm -hmm. right uh, you need to build it on your own uh, you don't have a pension either uh, so yeah, that's another reason why, you know, you have to be very serious about it. And if I, if by the end of this conversation, if there is an 18 year old, what's the starting age? Because children these days also make decent money through pocket yes. money and a whole lot of other festivals and things like that. Yeah. I've seen that in my own house. Mm. So if I am really savvy about this, how early can I start on this? So it's not complicated at all. And it's it the, the thing with this is uh, it's not technically complicated. It is complicated in terms of discipline. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain rule that you have to do X on on this day of the month, month on month. 
So it's the discipline which is tough. It is not what you need to do. It is it's absolutely simple, right? I mean, anyone with a basic understanding of you know school level mathematics can understand this, right? So that's how I'd put it. Uh, so the problem is in the discipline, not in 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 terms of uh, asset selection and all that. Uh, you don't even need to change what you're buying every month. It can the same thing. So it's like. You know, just put it on a, on a systematic investment plan, and it just takes the money out of your bank on a given date uh, every month, and just keeps investing. So we're going to uh, cover three things: the power of compounding, yeah. portfolio management basics, introduction to risk and inflation, yes, yes. and the discipline. Yes. Right. Um, I have another question. Yeah. What is the stock market, and why is it essential for personal investment? Sure. So if you look at so if you, if you have, and this is where uh, the concept of inflation inflation comes in, right? So if you have hundred rupees today, we keep reading about inflation as going up, going up, etc. And government gives you a number five percent inflation this year. What that really means is the worth of that hundred rupees that you have today is ninety five next year. It's buying capacity. Is that the buying capacity reduces? So if you have hundred 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 rupees today, if you don't do anything with it, you don't invest. Uh, what it can buy, what you can buy with, you know, that. I mean, it, it becomes ninety-five rupees, right? So, I mean, yeah, that, that's that's the problem with uh, not investing. So, the inflation starts eating into the uh, buying power of of whatever money that you have. Now, you need to beat that, right? So, uh, what you want is at least what is. I mean, if I can do something with hundred rupees today, with whatever I invested, whatever the values, I should be able to buy the same thing uh, next year. Right. Uh, so, what was hundred today costs hundred and five tomorrow. So, my hundred should also become hundred and five. Right. So, they might at least at par. Not that it's going to help you, but you'll at least be at par. Right. And and your money's worth doesn't go down. Right. The traditional things that people have been doing is say put money into fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, if I look at today's data, so fixed deposits are giving not more than seven percent at this point in time. The government is saying that the inflation is five, but what happens is these are government numbers. The real inflation is what you and me go through. So go back one year, see what was the cost of milk, right, or or petrol, or or anything, right. Just look at that. So the real inflation, in my view, is way more than what this government numbers is. This government number is for fixing the fixed deposit interest rate, right. So what they claim to be five percent is actually way more, in my view. Right, so uh, so the seven percent uh, interest uh, that you are getting with the fixed deposit is going to get taxed. Right, so if your slab is let's say thirty yeah. percent, yeah, so that seven so seven becomes those are the seven percent uh, return becomes four point nine percent return, yeah. and and the government numbers of inflation is five five percent. You are still losing money, yeah. right? So that is the problem with with fixed deposit. While it is a short return, you are actually losing money gradually. Right, because because of what I just told you. Now this is where it's and see the government is not the, these fixed deposit guys, then the banks or the government securities like the bonds are not going to pay you more more than what the inflation is. It's not going to happen. I mean, government can't just get money from somewhere and give it to you, right? So it's it's tied to the inflation rate. So the only way to beat that inflation and this is proven over hundreds of years. Is to have an expo exposure to the market, because the economy actually grows at a much faster pace. The the sorry, not the economy, but but the companies in general, the good ones, actually grow much faster than this rate of uh, inflation that we see, right? Which will reflect in the stock prices. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it comes at a risk, right? And we will we'll talk about how to kind of uh, de-risk that. Uh, and this is why it is very very important to have an exposure to stock markets. And this is something that traditionally. In India, people have shied away from, right? But if you look at, uh, let's say, an advanced economy like a US, uh, I think that, and if, I don't have the right numbers, but of the curve, but I think 60 to 70 percent of the people there are invested in stock market somewhere or the other, mm -hmm. either directly or through one of the fund which is managing their, uh, you know, retirement account, uh, because that retirement account they can invest in stock market to beat the inflation or whatever, right? Uh, that number is. Abysmal in India. Yeah. Not many people do it. Uh, so either they will do real estate, which is fine, but 
again, it's not for everyone. And real estate requires a large chunk of money to get started with. And it has, it co comes with its own set. It's, it has a different cycle of growth, right? So for many years, it would stagnate and then kind of give you the returns in the next one year or two years. Uh, second, it is not liquid. Mm -hmm. This you can sell tomorrow and, and get the money tomorrow. Um, so that is why it is actually important to look at stocks now and we will talk about how to have a little less risky model of because it will come at see, everything that every every return that you get on top of this government fixed deposit is going to come at a risk. Yeah. That's a given. Right. So uh, it's not it's not going to come with uh, without any risk. The only thing that comes without risk is that fixed deposit thing, which is actually something where you lose money. So, Eventually. Yeah. So so. Long story short, there is no way but to take some risks. There is absolutely no other way out, right? So, so when you talk about the stock market, what are some basic things I need to understand? Is yeah. it more around Nifty, um, gold market? What is it that I need to understand? Yes, so there are multiple ways to uh, invest in this stock market, right? Uh, we, are, we know that you know a lot of companies are listed there and you buy a part of the company and as the company grows, the, the profit gets redistributed, right? And the profit grows, that, re that results in an increase in the stock price. And if you're holding the stock price, that is the gain that you get. You can sell it and, and you know, uh, make money. Um, so that is one way where you, you say that, you know, I know company XYZ is a great company and it'll do great, et cetera, et cetera. You make assumptions. And if, if, you're, if you're smart, I mean, if you really, really understand it, uh, you may want to just go direct. But my sense is 95% of the people are not capable of picking stocks, right? So, uh, so while that avenue exists, I would not recommend it to someone who's just getting started, right? Uh, I mean, if the guy is so financially literate, uh, they would already be doing it. True. Let's be honest about it, right? So, but uh, there are other avenues. The second avenue is uh, what is called a mutual fund, right? And there are various categories of mutual fund. We will talk about that as well. Um, where there are professionals that take your money and invest in a portfolio of companies, right? Uh, and they keep churning it. Uh, so if something is not working, uh, they have a better sense of whether should, they should stick around or exit from it or there's a new company that's come, they should get it on board. Uh, and we'll talk, we'll see some long-term data from uh, these mutual fund companies uh, that I think for, 90, for 95, 96% of the audience, that is sure. the way to uh, get into, get a, to have a market exposure, right? So there's mutual fund. Then there are indices like Nifty, which is a collection of the top 50 companies in India, right? And there is a way to buy Nifty, mm -hmm. right? So Nifty Bees is, is an index fund. Uh, if you buy Nifty Bees, it is a representation of how Nifty is doing. Nifty is, you know, the, the stock market in India, the main stock index in India, uh, consists of the top 50 companies in India, right? So best of the... Best of the best. And and the best part is they keep churning that list of 50. So if something is not performing very well in terms of the uh, the price movement, it gets thrown out and the next one comes in. Yeah. So there's an automatic rebalancing happening here. So that is why the index works very well. Mm -hmm. So if you're invested long term, mm -hmm. and unless there is a major, you know, uh, major catastrophe for a for a long span of time, you will you'll be okay. Yeah. Because the economy economy keeps growing, company is getting better. If something is not working, that company gets thrown out and a better company replaces it. What's a major catastrophe? Would COVID yeah. be one? Well, COVID was very momentary. Uh, uh, it was from a stock market perspective, COVID was a uh, catastrophe for a very short span of time, like three months. Mm -hmm. Within three months, all the losses were recovered and it, the stock market boomed after that. So if I look at 2020, it has given phenomenal results. Right, the the returns, stock market returns in 2020 is phenomenal. Even though, if you look at uh, the Feb and March time frame, the stock market was down 35 percent. Index was down 35 percent. So one, imagine more than one third of your portfolio is, is wiped out. But the, but here is another. So this is another, another. This is actually the real problem. What happens is that there was a study conducted in the U.S. Uh, Mutual funds have shown their returns over the last 20 years, right? So they're saying that, you know, we gave a CAGR of 12% or whatever. Let's assume 12%. They did a deep study of, you know, what is it that the customers really, really made? Mm. I'll be surprised they didn't make more than 6 to 
The reason was when there was a catastrophe like that, lot of people exited. Never came back. Never came back. So, so they took the loss, but they never uh, rode the wave back. Yeah. So while uh, the the index gave, while the fund gave a return of 12, 13 percent, uh, when they aggregated the you know what was the real return that the users got, most of most of the most of the customers got, it was just six, seven percent. So. So this brings in another problem. Uh, this brings in another, another thing that we need to look at. So by now we understand that you know uh, the return comes at a risk. Mm -hmm. The anything, uh, anything, any return, any returns over that FD rate mm -hmm. comes at a risk. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, uh, is there a way to minimize that risk? Right. Eventually, what will happen is so if if you are like really really young, mm -hmm. right. Uh, you don't need to be that risk averse because first, your the amount of money that is invested is small. What kind of money are we talking about? Like thousand bucks? You can do it every month if you want to. So the the, the the thing here is doing it every month. That is what is important. It doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter how much. It yeah, regularly. you do what you what you can, and there is a growth path for that. I mean, I can show you uh, what that it can what it can translate to you starting with any number. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, so it doesn't matter how much, uh, or or the way to think about it is you can also think of X percentage of my salary. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's another way to think about it. That uh, no matter what, I'm going to put X percentage of my salary into this. Right, so that's another way to think about it. And mm -hmm. now you can you can make some assumptions and still. Yeah. You know, I think what we're, we're also talking about is. There's no personal tip here, at least put 1000 bucks or no. 500. No, no, no. It's up to each one of us. Yes. The sheet is actually going to show, allows you to play around. Yes. To see what is your risk appetite and what you're... No, I don't think it is about risk appetite. It is about how, how, how much are you willing to compromise on your uh, lifestyle today to invest here for a better future. I think it is about that, yeah. right? Um, Repeat that. Yes, uh, so it's it's about making a compromise on your current lifestyle for a better tomorrow. Yeah. That is how I would think about it. And again, it's easier said than done. <laughs> right? I, I, I actually think yeah. it's a little, um, so pardon me, uh, it's not, I, you, you used the word compromise, so I'm coming back on that. I don't think it's a compromise. It really helps you declutter your expenses and then see what really matters for you yeah. in the long run. Yeah. Do you want to make money work for you or do you want to work, work. for money? Absolutely. Right? And Absolutely. It's that. But, but you know, I mean, I really don't expect that someone who's just getting started a job and started getting money and all. Uh, I mean, how many of them would really be thinking of those lines really? when they are like at 23? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, once you got married and you know, responsibilities, right? then that's when this thing will start kicking in. I don't really expect a 23 year old. I mean, there will be a small percentage of, of people, but I mean, all I can do is show you the power. Now it's up to you how you want to use your money, right? Uh, delayed gratification versus instant gratification. So, so that's what it is about. Um, because there are some certain harsh realities. I mean, I'm seeing this as a problem right now. Something that we talked about, right? Uh, we don't have a social nest. Right. So uh, you're not going to get taken care of. So don't be under any illusion that, you know, it's a developed country and there is social security. There's none, nothing of that sort. Yeah. Right. So uh, so don't be under any of those, you know, American or, or, or British illusion that, you know, there is a social security and you'll get a pension and whatnot. You'll not get anything. Right. So uh, and this is something that people really, really, it, it really needs to get into their head. Uh, that you don't have any, any cushion. So, you know, if you are really earning well right now, better st start thinking about, you know, uh, saving and uh, making, a, making a future for yourself because uh, this American model of living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck is not going to work for you in India. Yeah, and I think when you compound or, sorry, compound, I'm stuck on this word, compound, when you couple it with health and as you grow your health yes. is... And then the responsibilities of, uh, you know, you're taking care of children, spouse and... So many things, parents. right? Uh, look at the cost of a car here versus the cost of the car in the US. 
right? So your salary is one fifth, and the car car costs you double. Mm. Right? Uh, look at the cost of of kids' education here. There, the the kid is almost studying for free till eleven, twelfth, or whatever, right? Look at that cost here, because the kid is going to international school or whatever, right? Look at that cost. Um, look at the subsequent cost, as in the graduation cost. It's exorbitant, right? It's exorbitant. So where is that going to come from, right? If if you're in the West and maybe you're just used to, you know, if the kid turns eighteen, they will take the loan and. Do whatever that they want to with, do with their life. We don't think like that. So, so you you have to take care of that as well. So, I personally believe that the Indians. There is a reason why Indians have been you know saving quite a bit, at least generation before me or whatever. Whatever they. There is a very sound re reason behind it. It has to be done that way. But my trouble right now is, but as I see today, the youngsters today, uh, some somehow. You know that thing is not inbuilt. That why do they need to save that? Somehow, some it's, it's not clicking. Mm. You know, I I don't see this. Uh, I mean, yeah. So and this is going to bite at some point in time. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you're 25, everything looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Five years later, 30, and you're married, and, and now you need a house. And look at the cost of real estate right now. Yeah. I mean, think of how many people can really, really afford. Uh, uh, an average apartment in Bangalore. What is the cost of an average apartment in Bangalore? Right. When you're starting a family, you need a house, simple house, basic house. Uh, all where where is all of that going to come from? I mean, there is there is no way. Yeah. I mean, there is it's not. Uh, so this the saving thing is not a hobby or whatever. It, it has to be done yeah. because of the escalating costs of pretty much everything. Uh, And the insecurities associated with the job itself. Like back then, at least when you start a job. It's there for your life. Yes. And even us, like I work 15 years in a company. Um, it's not like everything is hunky dory, but you had loyalty for a bit. Yes. But I think even all those are dying today. Both. Yeah. Both ends. Both ends. From us. Absolutely. As far as, 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 as from the company. Right? Absolutely. So it becomes more important to save your own house. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because the, sky, the cost of skyrocketing. I mean the. I mean, I, I just worry about you know. I mean, think about a a thirty year old maybe, right? Just starting a family. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there you are. And uh, you know, cost of cost of buying a house and a car, and then the kid is going to come, and and the cost associated with that. It's it's going to take some effort. I mean, and this nest is what. And again, see, this this is another problem, right? So when this cost can start coming in at thirty. What are you going to do about this investment? Mm. Because these costs are month on month, right? Yeah. So the EMI is going to go away every month. So uh, if so, that is that is bound to happen. So if you have taken a house on rent or or a car on on a house on uh, EMI or a car on EMI, that's going to happen every month on month. Uh, and this also is sort of an EMI, right? Which you are doing it for yourself. Uh, which one would you prioritize? Would you prioritize taking a little? Lesser car or a, or or maybe a lesser house, uh, so that this is taken care of as well. I mean, those are decisions that people have to take, but those should be rational decisions rather than you know just just doing it because you are doing amazing today. Yeah. You don't know about tomorrow. So. I think one yeah. thing I learned in the previous conversation and the work that we did as groundwork before that was, irrespective of what age you are in, it's important to know your relationship with money. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see money? Is it a security? Is it stability? Is it identity? Some people associate it with identity as well. So that's where your luxury cars, even though you can't afford a uh, phone that you can't afford, bikes or other things that you can't afford, you'll take EMIs to actually cater to that. This is what you want in the long term. Yes. So I think it's it's all about delayed gratification, which is a very hard thing in in, you know, in today's age. Yes, right? it's 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 very very hard yeah. uh, for most people to delay that. And but you know, you can you can either have this or that. You can't have both. You seem to be completely like dejected by this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I yeah. So this instant gratification thing doesn't work for me, right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I just need it. I need to have it tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this is impulsive. Uh, it doesn't help you in the long run. 
so in general you know i i, I just keeps i my default answer when my wife asks something is no and <laughs> you know uh, and that's a safety valve actually in in in, in the way i think about it if you don't do anything if, you know if nothing is going to change so okay and then you think about it and then then so this instant gratification is where the problem lies in my view right i mean uh, yeah and phone is a great example yeah Just people have phone that is equal to two months salary and which is like insane i mean that's not justifiable but people do it right uh, same happens with cars uh, house i can still understand pushing up a little bit uh, because there is a value associated with the house it doesn't depreciate the car and phone depreciates the way it, the moment it comes out of uh, the shop right uh, lifestyle is it yes so lifestyle creep is 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 a is a major major issue and uh, and i think i think the jobs and the way the jobs thing job things is related to economy is going to be topsy turvy nothing is going to get better yeah i don't believe next 20 years is is going to get better yeah. than the previous 20 years i don't think that's going to be the case <laughs> right uh so yeah i mean i think uh, the way i see this um because i pivot around change and i talk a lot about change you know we've always heard that change is constant and yet uh, it's something very hard for me to internal internalize for a long time i've heard this you know you, you drive organization by change and you see there is method methodology tools and all that for that but when it comes to an individual i noticed we're very familiar with this phrase that change is constant and yet it's the acceptance of that change that's happening around us yeah, and the a- awareness of how it's impacting as today and how it will impact us in the long run that's the responsibility the right. choices we make in that is what is really important so all we can do is understand the change is constant correct jobs are going to come jobs are going to go things are going to change things are going to be a ride but then if you have a certain way of riding these waves which True. is the discipline True. and the fundamental philosophy True. Then but the but there is one good thing I see in the future, right? For ah, uh, for the new kids, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I think the opportunities that they have now to let's say create a new business, yeah. you know, it can be anything. Yeah. That is ten times better than what it was maybe when I was growing up, right? So it's not that the avenues are closing. Actually, the avenues are getting yeah. better. Yeah. But again, you have to think uh, think of in, in those lines yeah. that so if you are going to be an employee like like I have been. Yeah, man, you have to go. You got to do this. There is no, there is no escaping it. But you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to remain an employee. You can become an entrepreneur, and there are the avenues are are crazy high, right? I mean, as compared to what it was twenty years back. So not everything is 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 gloomy here. Yeah. Uh, the youngsters actually have far more opportunities now in terms of starting their own business, and I would actually highly recommend. you know every every youngster to think about it at least because the energy that you have at that point in time and the passion and dedication the time amount of time that you can spend yeah. that you can reap a lot of benefit of of starting it early and there's not much cost associated in failing at that point in time you know so i would actually say that you know out of college and and some yeah. someone should try being an entrepreneur yeah. what have you you have nothing to lose yeah. right maybe 2 years will will get wasted but that's all you learn so much more and the amount of learning that you will have no one in working a 9 to 5 will have that learning in the next 10 years yeah. right what you will learn in those 2 years is it's going to be phenomenal so it's not all dark and gloomy uh crazy opportunities lies ahead india in terms of you know even in, if you have to do it in india the amount of opportunity that you have now is just insane till 10 years back it was think next to impossible to think about let's say creating a business around a mobile app who will have data where is data going to come from look at it now you don't even talk about data cost whatever it is assume that everyone has it like a billion guys have it a billion guys is, is a huge market that didn't exist 10 years back right i mean what bigger opportunity are you, are you looking for i mean we have a country of billion plus uh, a huge market right within forget about exporting to this or that 
you have a huge market there is a, there is a digital ecosystem that is well set now uh, things work uh, payment mechanism is, is awesome uh, your data is great huge opportunities which didn't exist just 10 years back so think about it uh, huge opportunity uh, my my suggestion would be to absolutely think about you know one giving one or two years just trying something out on your own rather than you know get into a job so, and yeah get stress into on that and stress on that okay. it's yeah i mean huge opportunity lies which was not there frankly think about when you started how many opportunity would you have had of if you had thought of uh, doing a business in india it was very very hard right i even started something on my own didn't didn't go far yeah. because there was no concept of like an angel investment or whatever whatever that ecosystem didn't exist at that point in time so no i mean even if it's a great idea you have to be like terrible like insanely lucky to kind of uh, make it happen that convert that into success it was very very hard that's not the case today i mean and you can fail that's totally fine uh, i mean look at the amount of startup thing activity going on right it's not that every startup is is becoming a success but the person who's doing it is not a failure at all yeah. right he is moving on to doing something else with a different company and doing great with his life yeah. so that's how you have to start thinking uh, not everyone has to start you know doing this by becoming an employee getting x amount of rupees per per month guaranteed and saving y percentage of that that is one one way of doing it but there there is so much more to more so much more that you can do now which was not possible till a few years back so yeah i want to go a little more i think you talked about this a little bit but i want to i want to hear a little more from you going a little deeper i guess it's a lot of littles i used there can you explain the concept of investment well i think i think for <laughs> someone who doesn't know anything about investment can you explain the concept of investment yes so so i'll i'll go back to my uh, 100 rupee example with inflation right uh, if you have 100 rupees today uh, it's worth 95 next year and you don't want that you don't want to get poorer every year right there is no reason why you should why anyone would want that to happen if you don't invest you are going to get poorer poorer because that 100 will remain 100 on paper but the buying power is getting eroded year on year because of inflation so you need to invest it in such a way that the buying power is more so today if if you are if you are 100 and it can buy stuff worth 100 obviously uh, next year when that 100 worth becomes 105 you want to have 107 with you mm. rather than just 105 because then you have not moved at all mm. a if you don't invest is going to go down mm. right b if you invest in a super safe thing you will remain wherever you are right uh, the third i mean and if you invest better you will be ahead of that right so uh, what is worth 100 today becomes 105 but you are now worth 110 right so you can still afford that 105 and you'll still be left with 5 right and that is what investing does so you have to think of it uh, from uh, the perspective of uh, you know the the value of money you know how it degrades you have to have a very good sense of that money actually degrades if you don't do any investing the the power degrades the buying power of money reduces daily uh, monthly yearly god i yeah. think i told you this last time also when we connected on this topic mm-hmm. i think there's so many life lessons <laughs> yeah. in this whole conversation yeah. like you know if you can't invest in yourself yeah it's the same story Yeah, the power of you is just going to it's like it's like a radioactive power that just yes, there is a half life. Yeah, it's, right? it's it's reducing. Same thing that you're talking yes. about here, and when they say mon- make money work, this is what make money work. Yeah, is there. and 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 my point is why would you not do it? Uh, because this is the only reason why you're working. Why are you working? I mean, unless you are a scientist and who has to get a Nobel Prize or or a very so one maybe one percent of of people are like that who have uh, you know some other ambitions out of the work. Uh, but in reality, let's be very honest. After so many years working, right? You are really working for money to make yourself secure, okay. right? So ninety nine percent of the people work for that only reason. <laughs> that reason only. So you don't have an excuse. you don't have an excuse of saying that you know i don't know how to manage 
because you know this is this is the real objective why you're working and now you don't you can't give me an excuse that you know i don't know how to do it so i don't do it because then it's the per whole purpose of slogging gets defeated frankly speaking so yeah. let's jump into compounding it is i read this somewhere that it is looked at as the eighth wonder of the world yeah we learned this as simple interest compound interest and that's pretty much it but the concept of compound actually has picked up it resonates and is available as content it keeps coming everywhere these days i think it started with warren buffet and then yep. you know it just became more and more prominently out there talk to me about what is compounding so so let's say something that even a 15 year old can understand yeah it's 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 Okay, fifteen year old. Huh. The formula, I'm sure they know the formula, mm. right? Uh, so that's that's the easy bit. Um, so the thing really is about, you know, let's assume that you invest in something that gives you ten percent return. Mm. Okay, and you started with the hundred bucks, mm. right? So the first year, what will happen? That hundred will become hundred and ten. But now the next ten percent is not going to be on hundred. It's going to be on hundred and ten. Right, so now it will become one hundred twenty-one. Right, if it was just ten and ten, it would become one twenty. But now it has become one twenty-one, and this thing multiplies exponentially as the number of year increases. So what appears abysmal small, what is this going to do for you uh, early on? And we'll 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 show you in a in a spreadsheet as to how this exponential. So it's the the whole point is that compounding. is an exponential curve which means it really takes off a little late patience is a virtue patience is the virtue that you need to possess uh, and it's a proven thing anyone can do it on on the spreadsheet and see for themselves right it requires patience but it's is exponential in nature right so the increase that you will have so i mean we will talk about you know if over a long period of time this is how much we invested and this is how much it has grown to that is where you will see the power of compounding even with very very realistic in fact low risk returns forget about you know higher returns with a higher risk i'm talking about lower risk return of how uh, a disciplined approach towards investing with a small amount month on month be disciplined about it with with average level of risk not extremely risky can result in a, in a really really a lot of money right so yeah and this is why you're also talking about start early because start early yes the exponential impact yes the benefits the true benefits of it is really coming together it comes late yes so there's a huge difference between someone starting at 25 versus someone starting at 35 yeah. the 10 years is a very very big deal and if they have to end at the same place 25 year old guy has to invest x that 35 has to maybe you know do 2x or 2.5x can we see that yes we can yeah we can what i'm going to show is a very simple spreadsheet uh there are certain assumptions here and you're free to change it right so think about let's say a young engineer out of college mm. right who's just started working for an mnc mm. right can i change the persona sure let's take uh, a young freelancing content creator How, what would be the salary Oh, what what kind of money can they save? At least I think what three thousand, four thousand, five thousand per month. How much can you save? Very less. Hmm. Four thousand less. Less. Okay. Yes. Give me more realistic. Give number. me a realistic number. Ten thousand. Okay. Ten thousand. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there is one more assumption here that every year your salary is going to go up. That's the assumption, right? So your your investment should also increase year over year right so 10000 number is based on your current salary mm -hmm. right the so next year with a better salary you should be able to invest a little bit more so i'm making going to make some assumptions here that the monthly investment is 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 10000 rupees mm -hmm. and the annual increment on this investment is 7.5% right that is uh, by the end of the year my pay increases by 7.5% and then okay. which is a fair assumption okay. i believe and uh, so which means if you if you're doing 10000 per month today you have going to do 10000 into 
you know, and the seven plus that extra 7.5% next year onwards, monthly, right? So that is the assumption and there is a... You're putting the entire uh, increment back into this. Not the, the, so the percentage of the increment. Okay. Yeah, so if your salary was 100 and now it has become 107, mm. so of the earlier 100 you were putting whatever, mm. 10 bucks, mm. then 10 bucks plus 7.5% of the 10 okay. bucks, right? Fair. That's what we're talking Fair. about, right? Mm. So it's, it's, it's a very uh, doable thing. For instance, the first year you invested 1.2 lakhs, right? Because 10K per month. So next year, if you do a 7.5% increment, you will be investing uh, uh, 1,29,000. So 9,000 extra because of the 7.5% okay. assumption, right? So for something like this, uh, I've just uh, calculated and I'm assuming, uh, uh, let me just, huh. so let's assume that, you know, you have gone with a very, very uh, uh, safe investment, which gives you 13%. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're and gonna talk about why we will talk about safe, it. Yes, huh? yes, yes, yes. Uh, with something as simple as this, in twenty-five years, this can this gets converted to around thirty-seven lakhs eighty-four thousand. With just one point two nine as the investment. Yes. With 1.2 starting investment, 1 .2 starting. Uh, 25 years, and the total investment that the money that you have put in is less than 9 lakh rupees over 25 years. So over 25 years, you have paid only 9 lakh rupees and that has translated to 37 lakhs. Is it like our insurance, put it in, shut it and close it and forget it? Yeah, you should just keep doing it. There's the, I mean, uh, the only thing that needs to be done here is and uh, if there are multiple asset classes involved, mm. so there is a gold and an equity, mm. whatever percentage, mm. uh, at the beginning of every year, you have to stick to that percentage. Mm. So what will typically happen is, let's talk about, let's say gold, 50-50, 50, 50, 50 gold and 50 equity, right? Uh, what will invariably happen is after one year, let's say the market does better. So that 50% uh, will not remain 50%, it will become 60% and this will become 40%. Mm. Right. Mm. So what you have to do is get rid of that 10% from equity, book that mm. and put it back into uh, into gold, gold so that it again becomes 50-50. Right. So you need to keep rebalancing this because what happens is while this is all great while the equity is working or uh, going high, when market tanks, you will have appropriate amount of gold, mm. which is going to again gold. rocket. Rocket up, yeah. uh, and that is what that is called, called rebalancing yeah. the portfolio, right? So you have to stick to a theory. Uh, so that was a persona behind. I mean, something like a, a something like a 10, 10, 10, 000 10 per month, right? Mm. Now let me just change that to ten thousand. I will make it twenty thousand. Mm. Okay. Mm. So ten thousand was giving you a final corpus of thirty-seven lakhs. Oh. Okay. Mm. What do you think uh, 20K would be like? Would it reach around 70? Sorry. So I, I, so the 10K, I had a, one second. This, <laughs> this lakhs and crore confuses me. I'm sorry. So you would have invested 89 lakhs and you would have ended at 3.78 crores with 10,000 bucks. Over 25 years? Yes. So this, you know what, Rajneesh, yes. I, I think I <clears throat> I started saving from when I was 27, 28. Okay. I wish I'd met you back then. No, at that time I didn't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been saving, I've been putting in that freaking yeah. fixed deposit. Uh, that, 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 that is one thing I knew and I've never put even one rupee in fixed deposit. Even as a youngster. Because that didn't make sense to me right from day one. Okay. I have not put even one rupee in, in FD in my life. I'm not I'm not saying I mean for people who have put it on fixed deposit, good for you, but I think this is No, it's, it's not, not good. Really it's a it's a it's a bad it's a it's a very, very bad investment decision. Yeah. Because you are actually degrading the value of your own money. Yeah. You are actually getting poorer by putting money in, in future fixed deposit. You have to take risk and 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 get a little bit more. Yeah. I mean future I mean it just sounds safe, it is actually not safe. Yeah. You actually lose money. You lose money gradually. That's all that happens. Now let's take a techie. Huh? So take, tell me, tell me the number. We we, we techies actually are pretty decent money. Yes. I think we can put easily what 
let's tell me 50 60 grand 50 60 grand will make uh, will you will get a very rich techie 50000 what is that yeah 50 60 yeah 20 right? 25 year that translates around 19 crores with 50000 starting point so just like that i have become a crorepati yes just by being disciplined of doing it day in, I mean month in month out with and this is with an assumption that you are getting a, only a 13% return which is a lower return which is a very low return in my view and we will talk about how this can be better because things change dramatically if, if you start tweaking these uh, uh, percentages yes. from 13 to yes 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 so that's so we, we will talk about that as well if it's this simple, yes. why why are we not doing this? Why are we not taught about this in school? Why that is the whole talk? point. Uh, I really think this is some so elementary, this is so basic, this is so fundamental. And I have my own conspiracy theory why this is not taught. Because think about this techie, right? Why will he work for you after 10, 12 years? <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason. <laughs> why why would he work for someone after after if his yeah, he'll be done in 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, why would he work for you? Taking calls in the night, 9.30 calls or whatever. Dude, 11. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock and yeah. early morning calls and, and driving on outer ring road. Yeah, why will you do that? Flying out yes. to every other city. Yeah. And, oh. There is no reason for them to do this, right? So, so my conspiracy theory is that <laughs> this is the reason why they're not taught. Otherwise, they would not have long-term employees. Where's the catch here? What's the catch here then? The catch is the, the discipline is very, very hard to follow. I'm telling you people, don't do it. Mm. Just don't do it. You do you need a buddy system like in programming? Yes. Yeah, so if you have not invested, the other guy is going to push you to invest, right? right? Or something of that sort. Right? You need, something like, like that. We had those buddy systems yes. in programming where you have two good guys. Yeah, yeah, both yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, a new yeah. space, you're getting into Correct. new technology. We, we're both equals. We try, we come back, we exchange yeah. notes, agree, and then that's the code we check in. Yeah, I mean, and, and other thing that I've seen is that even the industry doesn't make it simple. Uh, created, I mean, finance is, is thought of as, you know, some really, really exotic thing to master as if it's like, you know, really, really complex math. It is actually not. It is not. If you keep it, if you keep your investment philosophy simple, you will be fine. And the one that I am going to show you here is one of the simplest that you can think of, right? Uh, just putting some money in gold and some in a few kinds of mutual funds. That is it. No need to, to research a great company. No need to discover a great company. You don't. The problem here is is all of these things again can be taught very easily. But when it comes to following, that is where the problem lies. Mm. Right? That is where the problem lies. People don't follow. The discipline is the problem. So even if you look at all these great investors, right? There is no really, I mean, thing is, even if they tell you that this is what they do to make money, mm. you will still not be able to make money. Because you will not be able to stick to the rules and discipline that they created. So there is no magic and there is no rocket science behind, you know, what they do. It's actually very easy. But the problem is with the discipline required uh, to do in month in, month out. And that is where people fail. But the discipline that you're talking about is two things. I'm, I'm saying if I'm understanding what is discipline here. One is you have this transfer of this. Automatic. Uh, it just goes out. You've got that. It just goes out before you spend or whatever. Salary comes, push it. Salary comes. Huh, then, you're, then you're good. Right? Because the, because think about what happens to your PPF account or or your employee provident fund account. Oh, don't get it, me started on that. It grows, right? I mean, maybe it grows at a lower pace, eight percent or whatever, but it grows. Yeah. Right, and if you've stayed with the company for uh, ten years, yeah. it is still a very decent money that you make, even with a lesser return. Yeah. Why does it happen? Yeah. It's because you don't have a choice. It just goes away from your salary, and you forget about it for ten years, and the day you exit, that is when you think, oh, this. It's not too bad, right? Uh, and this is how it has worked for most of the people who got stocks as well, who never sold. It just kept compounding. Yeah. And here we are talking about 10, 10-12% 10, compounding. There it was a 25% compounding. In yeah. 25% compounding, money doubles in three years. Imagine money doubling in three years. If you do 25% compounding, money doubles in three years. 
So what's the second part of the discipline? Is it coming and checking your portfolio which we will get into? No. So if you are again it depends upon now. See if you are doing a rule based investing. So there are two rules here. Let's talk about this portfolio, Sorry. right? There are two rules. Mm. One is that you got to do this month on month, mm. this investing. Mm. Second rule is uh, at the beginning of every year, you have to rebalance your portfolio based on, you know, whatever rule that we thought of. Once a year. Yes, once a year. Okay. Once a year. Mm. That's it. That's it. And don't tell me that you, you don't know how to do this or you don't have time for this. Right? That is not even acceptable. Can I ask you something? Yeah. We're going to share this Excel. Yes. If there are, let's assume even 10 people are convinced That's by fine. this. They can. Uh, and 10 people start. Can we form a buddy system where they come together? I can help them. I would love to. I mean, I, I tried it with a few youngsters. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the point is that, you know, I may have, Let's get rich. I may make you work uh, to, you know, nothing's going to come for free. So you'll have to take effort. But what uh, will you make me work? I'm putting the money in. Go it. figure out whether this is the right investment. I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you some work Fair. as well, no? Fair. So that, yeah, because you're see, otherwise you'll not become independent. Yes. Otherwise, what is the point in yes. me just saying, ah, go like do this, go do this? Yes. Doesn't help. Yes. Should never right? give anything to no. anybody for free. Yeah. Yes. I, can, I can show you the way. Yes. Uh, you can actually make it a far, be far better than what I can. Yeah. Because our youngster, your risk appetite would be way more than what I would have. Eto doesn't have appetite only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let's go to uh, this. Uh, do you want to show any other sure. aspect of compounding? Yeah, so this was about compounding. Now, now you would say, okay, you have put some random number here, right? Uh, where did this come from? Why should I expect this kind of return? Mm. Whatever that you're showing me. Mm. Random is you're talking about that percentage. Yes. 13, the, 15, yes. Where did risk. that come from? Huh. Right? Huh. Because that's an assumption here Correct. for this to demonstrate. Now, if, if you go, if I look at, we talked about mutual funds, right? Yeah. Uh, mutual funds are essentially uh, subject to market risk. Subject to market risk, absolutely. And there are various kinds of uh, funds, right? So there are funds that only hold large cap companies, like really large companies, right? Uh, so, so if the company is really, really huge, the risk could be less, but the return will also be less. Mm -hmm. Because that company is not going to grow double the size next year. Mm -hmm. But if you look at small cap, mm -hmm. it's a tiny company. Profit is less, but the profit can triple tomorrow in the next year. So the stock price increase would be, stock price increase is a function of the profit margins, mm -hmm. right? So the, how, how it increases. So small cap is the riskiest of all. But obviously, and that's the reason why the return is higher here. Uh, if you see this, this uh, table here, what I've done is for the last 10 years, I have uh, taken the returns and then computed a CAGR returns of what would have happened if you had invested in these categories of uh, mutual funds over 10 years, mm. right? And the, and, and the funds that I've taken are all medium grade funds because I don't expect you to be smart enough to pick up uh, the best funds every year or, you know, really the worst ones every year. So I've taken the median, right? So median suggests that small cap has given a return of around 22% annualized in the last 10 years. The large cap has given around 14%, right? 14.5%. Yes. Because these are companies that are growing. Mm. This is where the money is going to come from. This is where the growth is. And India doesn't have, I mean, the large cap segment, we don't have NVIDIAs of the world. Yeah. We don't have Googles of the world. We don't have Amazons. Our large cap is our companies that can only grow so much. They are not going to double their revenue next year, right? Reliance can only grow so much. I mean, now they're doing awesome with their, you know, getting into geo. But at one point in time, it was a petrol chemical company. I mean, how, how many petrochemical company of that size cannot become double the size, right? Uh, so, I mean, or there are automobile companies. Automobile companies, how much growth can they have? Right. Uh, we don't have that pure tech companies like an NVIDIA or an Amazon or a Microsoft who can still at that size deliver phenomenal returns. Right. We don't have that. So that's the reality. Uh, so, so our only growth, major growth happens in mid cap to small cap. That is where the growth is. And of course, it's the riskiest. So absolutely not suggesting ever picking up a small cap or a mid cap stock on your own. But Funds is not, uh, funds is where uh, this becomes very, very interesting. They do a phenomenal job in, in, in picking or getting out, exit and exit, uh, getting in, getting out is something that they have done a very, very good job in. Who with. is they? 
the mutual fund guys, the mutual fund managers, uh, especially in small cap, have delivered phenomenal results in 10 years. And the point here I'm trying to make is, but if you look at, so I also have some data around how much Nifty has delivered in the same time frame and what gold has done. Now, gold you will see and say, ah, this is boring, this gives 8, 9%, 7%, whatever, right? It's it's not very lucrative. But the fact is, if if I if I zoom out a little bit, right, look at it from 10 years, 15 years, 25 years perspective, 20 years perspective, then you would realize I'm going to switch now and to a different uh, chart here. Now, this chart actually shows starting from 2007. So we have a good 16, 17 years of 17 years of data here. This is when gold started. Yeah, this is where then started selling gold bees. Gold bees is an instrument for buying gold. Mm -hmm. It's a digital instrument. It's it's a uh, it's a ET, uh, ETF from Nippon, which the underlying is a gold, mm -hmm. right? So here we have data for gold bees, and we have data for what I call what is called Nifty bees, which is again a representation of Nifty, which is our main stock index. Over 17 years, uh, sorry, yes, this is this is uh, 17 years data. You would see that the they have both delivered identical returns, mm -hmm. but there's one difference here. This this blue thing is Nifty, mm -hmm. right? But the journey from the day of the the starting to end that has been very very different. For instance. Uh, and this is where the risk part comes in, right? So if you are invested in only stocks, right? Uh, then it has its own, own um, you know, ups and downs. Uh, and then if they have some other asset like, let's say, gold, it also has its own ups and downs, right? So both have a different trajectory. But what is what you will realize when you look at this graph is that while their journey has been different and both have reached, imagine a scenario where you had, a, let's say, a, a equal investment in both mm. your journey would have been extremely simple it would have been a very linear kind of a growth without having to go through this psychological damage of 50 percent reduction uh, this is when lehman brothers happened right 2008 then the covid thing when market tanked by 35 percent and these are things you want to avoid because what invariably would happen is that you will forget all of your previous study etc and the moment this panic costs sets in, you will exit everything and, and, and not come back when the markets have regained, right? So you will absolutely lose out. That's, that, the, that's a given. That's the discipline again. That is the, again, the, and this is again where the discipline comes into place, right? No matter what. So imagine, uh, since you're investing uh, every month, if you had invested in January and then it tanked and then it tanked again, you would have again, again invested when it had really, really tanked. And that would have multiplied like crazy immediately, right? So that is why it is very, very important to invest no matter what the market condition is, right? Uh, because here you would have to pay uh, whatever, uh, here you have to pay 30% less mm. to buy the same thing, mm. right? Uh, so that's, 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 the, that's the reason why it is absolutely critical no matter what, you have to stick to the discipline and this is where this, the, the other thing which is very apparent over here is that if you have two different asset classes that you invest in, which are which have their own growth cycles, the risk reduces significantly, mm -hmm. right? So as you will notice here, every time market has dipped, gold has taken care of the increase. So these are more uh, like in, you were in Yahoo, right? Um, I remember when I did that Six Sigma black belt, mm -hmm. there's a key metrics that you go after and then there are these balancing metrics. So this is more the balancing metrics that you're talking about. Yes. When one is going up, there's another going down. Yes. And you tap into the zone where your watermark is yeah. like in the middle ground of this. Right? So so in, in the portfolio, uh, in the portfolio world, there is uh, something called a modern portfolio th uh, theory. Mm. Uh, developed by Markowitz was his name. I, th I think it's the name was Markowitz. He got a Nobel Prize for that. And the whole thing revolved around combining different asset classes with different kind of returns and different kind of risk. And how he demonstrated how when you combine this, the overall aggregate risk actually goes down. Mm -hmm. And that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, individually, if you look at them, they come with their own sets of risk. But when you mix them together, the risk goes down. And this is exactly what happens even in case of a mutual fund. What is a mutual fund? Mutual fund is a collection of stocks. It's not just one stock, right? So they're like 30 different stocks. 
uh, if you have done a good job, which is what the manager is supposed to do, the overall risk of that fund actually goes down just because you have combined different stocks, mm. right? Uh, because when one is going up, the other might be going down, or vice versa, right? So that so the overall risk uh, is actually less. So this is another reason why people suggest investing in uh, in index like Nifty instead of picking stocks. Your risk, I mean, you have fifty different companies in in that index. Uh, so the overall risk is actually low. So while while you are seeing a thirty percent decline here in Nifty, if you look at some of the individual companies, the the decline was sixty percent plus, right? Sixty percent, seventy percent. It was crazy. Some didn't go down. So for instance, what would happen is in in something like a COVID, maybe the pharma companies would not have gone down by this much because there is business to be made, right? So they won't have tanked this much, but petrochemical or whatever, right? I mean everything tanked by forty percent, fifty percent. Who knows how much, right? So, so that that's that's how a portfolio works, right? When you add multiple asset classes, the overall risk of the system goes down. Versus, just keeping one stock. Now, now that one stock model can work very well for a, uh, for a very very savvy investor. The savvy investors have very less stocks. They don't diversify. Because they are really 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 smart. But that is a very tiny fraction of people who can do that. It is very hard. Uh, to to you know i mean you are a warren buffet yeah i mean you obviously won't be wasting your time here with me right so if you are that smart then yeah there is no reason to uh, diversify if you are really really smart but if you're not then then there is really no other way and is this the only combination uh, rajnish or are there other combinations like nifty and gold Are there other combinations? So Nifty and Gold is proven, right? That there is a negative correlation. You take a long, long-term data, ten, fifteen, twenty years. It will, you will mathematically see that the correlation that is coming out with the two is negative. Which means, when one goes up, other goes down, and they have a different cycle of of uh, going going ahead, right? So that that's a very proven thing, right? So uh, if we look at bonds, right? That is another thing that a lot of people invest in. My my problem with bonds is that. especially in india that the growth on bonds is kind of linear mm. which means that it doesn't come and help me when the market is tanking when it's going this yeah so it is just going up yeah. right that doesn't help that doesn't help me because when market is going 30% down uh, i want you to do a much better job there and that is where gold becomes very very interesting now and and here is another surprising part if you talk to most of the this res, this investment professionals you will hardly see them recommending gold oh. i don't know why but uh, maybe there is not a interesting enough product to sell around it but they don't recommend it and and here is the government that is giving uh, an if you need to invest in gold doesn't mean go out and buy physical gold you don't you don't need to do that uh, government has something called a sovereign gold bond it's a bond so government is committed to you know buying and selling at certain prices uh it's ex- extremely lucrative uh actually the real return of sovereign gold bonds would be way higher than what you are seeing here the reason being sovereign gold bond pays you a 2.5% simple interest on your principal that you invested in that bond mm. so that is that is one great thing about it the second thing which is insanely lucrative is once the bond matures whatever the duration was 5 years 7 years whatever you get back has got zero capital gains no tax no tax at this point in time at least i don't know when mrs sitaraman will will stop it but at this point in time uh, there is no capital gains till as long as you stick to the duration of the bond so it's it's a fantastic uh, uh, investment opportunity in, in my view and there were certain other studies that i that i that i saw and where what they did was they compared you know pretty much all the developing economies mm. right there was not a single uh, country other than india and india also was like very close where gold didn't beat their main index gold and this is this is study starting from 2000 till 2023 23 years time frame in almost every developing economy gold has beaten the uh, local index of that country in india also it's, it's only it was only slightly behind not too much behind like half a percent here or there so and and you won't see any book on investing or whatever talking about the need for gold 
what happens is you know i'm even when it comes to the literature part of of investing right most of the time we end up reading an american's book it doesn't have the indian pers- indian perspective mm-hmm. right so there are a lot of things that you will have to discover on your own no one is going to teach it you are not going to get a book and you know get done with it so book can give you a starting point and then there are a lot of things to discover mm-hmm. like gold is something that you know till 4 years back i wouldn't even touch gold and today i will not make a portfolio without a, without gold in it i think it is stupid in india not to have gold i mean that is how 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 convinced i am about gold at this point in What time what she comes back and changes some of the rules around it's still okay it's still okay as long as gold is giving the kind of return that it gives it's okay if there's some tax to be paid tax to be paid i mean tax you'll pay taxes when you still... yeah the numbers won't change because this is this is fund i'm talking about sovereign gold sovereign bonds a beautiful bonds. beautiful in, in, uh, investment opportunity i don't know till how long they will keep paying the simple interest plus uh, keeping it uh, uh, capital gains free i don't know that mm. right so as long as it is there uh, it's it's something that you just cannot not have in your portfolio a the returns are, returns are great b the kind of stability that you get because if you look at me personally my my portfolio consists of gold and is a serious uh, allocation in terms of percentage but the rest is all into small cap funds not even nifty because the theory is that if markets do well small caps will do do fine, fine. most likely beat it right and markets don't do well uh, stocks small caps are going to tank but this is where rather than you picking individual stocks you are relying on the mutual fund managers ability to manage the volatility mm-hmm. so typically what i have observed even with small small uh, small cap funds the maximum drawdown even during covid has not been more than nifty so imagine in good times you are absolutely beating nifty in bad times you are staying wherever nifty is okay. yeah. if that is the scenario why would i have nifty i would rather have small caps and i have the backup of a solid allocation in gold yeah. so that gives me the stability i'm not worried about a covid so even though i'm sitting on some from a stock perspective small caps are supposed to be volatile it is extremely volatile but that is where the gold works as a shock absorber for me right so that is how i ended up creating so as i said today i will not make a portfolio without gold it it makes no sense for me and especially for me now that you know i i don't work mm-hmm. right so i need i need a safety mechanism and yet uh, you know some sort of a decent return beat which beats the market yeah. for me personally gold in terms of uh, sovereign gold bonds and mutual funds small cap mutual funds has done insanely good so yeah so and so when you talk about portfolio management basics for our viewers who are going to start potentially could use this yes we are talking about nifty and gold no so to replace nifty with the small caps and this yeah. is why this is why i have see again it depends upon you know how much tolerance for risk you have. risk you have it's it's up to you so and for everyone is going to be different and this is where this the spreadsheet can help uh, give you some sense of uh, how it works right so here what i've done is i've taken nifty as my stock mm-hmm. but i'm saying absolutely go ahead and replace nifty with uh, small so, caps mm-hmm. right because if i look at this mutual fund data here nifty has traditionally given me 13.3% return mm-hmm. over 10 years mm-hmm. and this through various cycles right up, ups and downs and even a small cap is going to have uh, its ups and downs mm. right so uh, and it still delivered 22% right so and if i look at mid cap that has also given 20% mm. and as you can see here right this is so beautiful uh, larger the company the lesser the return would be a little bit less volatile but the return is going to be less because it can't grow it can't make profits the way the smaller company or even smaller companies can right the trouble here is uh, you need to have uh, good funds that know how to pick the stocks or when to exit the stock so that they deliver this kind of return and and the returns have been uh, have been terrific uh, as far as small caps is concerned and my point is that you know if i am invested sufficiently in in gold mm. i am absolutely willing to take risk from the stock perspective mm. because you know bad times i'm i'm kind of taken care of right so with this data let's say that there is 13% in nifty and and uh, and the reason why i'm saying uh, small cap makes sense is because in the portfolio ideas i will actually going to 
make a 50 50 assumption mm. let's say and here is some indication right and this again something just uh, not that you need to stick to it but you know if if you are young mm. right you can be very aggressive with your stocks mm. you don't need the because you have a long horizon that you're looking at right next 10 years right so you're not really worried about you know nah, this year i've made a 10 my percentage is down you have invested just a few lakhs it doesn't matter Versus when you are when you are crows down and crows of investment and then 10, 10 20 percent down, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it's a very big deal, right? Psychologically, it's a mental yeah, it's it's a torture, yeah. right? So so again, the the risk tolerance is different uh, based on age, and if you're a young guy, go all out with with maybe a little bit of gold mm. and 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 some nifty and and majority of it going into uh, stocks. And when I say nifty, think of it as stocks. Now whether it is nifty. Or whether it's going to be a mid cap or small cap is for you to determine. If it was nifty, just to show you the data, mm -hmm. right? If it was nifty and you had invested 80% in nifty and 20% in gold, mm -hmm. then this is how the graph looks like in 10 years time frame. And since there is gold in it, right? Mm -hmm. So look at look at what happens. Now this drawdown is where you were here at, at, your, at your peak. And from there it fell down this much, right? So nifty fell by 30% you will be down 20% because of 20% allocation in gold. Mm -hmm. But if you change this, so let's let's change this to 50-50. Mm -hmm. What you will notice is that the returns will be less, which is obviously because the risk has been down, but you will be down only 11%. So now it's up to you what you are comfortable with. There are various ways to make money. I mean, uh, you have to judge how much risk you want. The lesser the risk, the lesser would be the return. But it's up so to you. So when you took it as... 13% earlier for our 10k per month investment. Yes. What is that uh, distribution between these two? So, I mean, for that, uh, see, the way it will work is even if you make it like uh, 80, 20, 80 and 20, right? Mm. So, here it is showing 13% because we have assumed Nifty to be our, our investment vehicle. Okay. If I replace Nifty mm. with small cap, mm. which is giving 20%, mm then suddenly this numbers becomes very interesting because your your portfolio returns would be higher than nifty returns at a risk which is half of nifty let me ask you this this year i chose this as my risk appetite mm -hmm. but as i'm going through this and my responsibilities like if i take I'm getting married yes right my responsibilities are changing yes so I go to a lower risk yes. and it's still okay for us. It's totally fine. It's it's totally up to you. Uh, see, the, obviously the return will go down. But with that with that reduction, reduction in, in the return, you will have reduced risk as well. Yeah. Uh, what happens is most of the time when people start thinking about investment, the only thing that they have in mind is how much will they get mm. return. Mm. No one thinks, most of the people don't think about the risk associated with it. Mm. And that is with every investment. Even with the real estate. Mm. So yeah, there's a new property coming up. I'm going to pre-book it, pre-buy, whatever, before anything is there. You, that's a risk. There is a risk associated with it. Risk of default of the builder. What happens? Taken 20% down payment, not delivering it for the next 10 years. And it happens all the time, right? It has happened so many times. So no one thinks, most of the time people don't think about the risk involved with an investment. And I think it is very important that you look at the risk part as well. Yeah. So, uh, so that is so. This is for someone who wants to evaluate the kind of risk. And there's a reason why I put that drawdown, right? So, this drawdown will give you a sense of how bad can it get, mm. right? Mm. Even if it's momentarily, how bad can it get? Historically, how bad has it been? It'll give you some sort of a mechanism uh, to actually go forward. Mm. Some would say, you know, I don't care about some just 20% drawdown. That's totally fine with me. In the next five years, it happens. It happens. Mm. I know because if, I, if I'm able to live through that, I know I'll, I'll get more. So your allocation towards equity would be way more than gold. Mm. But some, someone who says, I don't want to go through all this. Yeah. I just want to go. I, I want to sleep properly in the night. I'm okay with, you know, one and a half percent less return. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah, so to each his own. Um, there, is, there is a model, there is a framework here which can help you make these decisions, right? Uh, everyone's risk tolerance is different. Mm. 
right so you can't i mean there's no one size fit all here uh, you can play around whatever works for you and my point here is that uh, this is just an assumption of what nifty gives you the nifty assumption is 14% or whatever right mm -hmm. it does mm -hmm. you should be expecting way more than nifty when you are going with funds even if you look at a large cap funds forget about small caps mm -hmm. even they will give you more than nifty most of the times right if if you are if you are good in in kind of uh, looking at uh, mutual fund returns etc uh, judging the right uh, funds which have a history of 10 years so for another thing here is that when how do i look for uh, the right mutual fund mm -hmm. right so right mutual funds are those that have been in business for a long time mm -hmm. a lot of the times people get trapped with you know new funds and offer that's like totally the worst thing that you can do they keep launching newer funds with no history uh, and people just put money on the faith that it will work out for them while there are companies that have a 10 year history you can go and you can see the performance over years and then take a call where does one go to go look at this yeah, there are there are multiple places for looking up uh, mutual fund information uh, you can go to value research online you can look at money control there is grow i mean just just put it uh, there is morningstar.in there are tons of them you just need to know what you what you want and and google will take you there uh that's that's very easy uh where to where to find long term performance data of mutual fund and this is again something that i started long back uh, so mutual fund investing is where i actually started and again based on very simple principles just evaluate every year see where you are uh, are you in the, in the top quartile or not so if let's say large cap you have invested large cap and there are like 40 funds and mm. so you evaluate after one year uh, whether your fund is in the top quartile or not if it's not that do you really do you, why do you switch Change. because uh, this three, 10 years back there was no there was no capital gains uh, if you hold the security for more than one year there was no capital gains so why would i why would i why would i not you know just switch to what i think and sometimes that can backfire as well because what didn't perform uh, last year doesn't necessarily mean that it won't perform uh, next year as well right so so but yeah i mean there are there are means and ways to do it no this is yeah. this is beautiful and yeah i think we talked about risks and in inflation as well and the combination of that yeah. over here as well right um any watch out for aspects here well i mean see there is no choice but to invest right mm -hmm. when we talked about a few things you don't have an option you have to invest that's that's a given now we also know that the only way to beat inflation is by staying invested in stocks mm -hmm. so you are not going to get a complete risk free system here it's not possible mm -hmm. it's not possible to get a risk free system that gives you a return which is which beats the inflation easily that's not going to happen so uh, now it's up to you to decide on on your risk appetite and create a system that works for you and nothing is going to be a linear graph which grows without any standard deviation that is not going to happen it will it will be like this yeah it will fluctuate you need to you need to understand your tolerance for that risk and then devise a system based on allocation of asset a asset b that works for you mm. there is no there's no rule here i mean a very aggressive person will not even care about gold i'll just be invested in small caps and over 10 years i'm getting 22% cagr yeah but of course that 22% cagr will come at a cost right so that's what it is all about it's all about that it's about balancing the 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 associated risk versus the return so you know that you will get 20% but it comes at a risk are there podcasts or things that i can watch listen to um to determine what um what are my choice points every year when i come back because one of the disciplines you talked about is other than regularly putting in the money so once a year come back to look at your portfolio yes reassess um yes you have to self could be a deterrent for quite a few of them and so over there are there some podcasts and things that could help us not sure uh i did it through some books and and reading some literature but uh, but but youtube have has tons of it now the problem here is that if there tons of it then that's a Good that's also a problem yeah. right yeah. you don't know about the authenticity of the source either uh 
and the see why i like this is because it's very numerically driven so you can test whatever that someone is talking about mm. and you know so for example if i've created this and if i give this to you mm. go ahead and play with it i mean uh, it's for you to uh, versus just you know someone saying that someone saying without someone making a qualitative statement right mm. <laughs> this is great this is awesome mm. go buy it okay but but there is there is a there is a very uh, quantitative way of you personally deciding whether it makes sense or not but again i'm i don't expect everyone to do that either okay. right okay. so but my point is that you know at some point in time you will have to take some effort in becoming uh, familiar with this and comfortable with this because this is why you're working i mean that i keep coming back to the same thing why are you working yeah why are you working yeah. right So if you're doing a business, throw all this away. You can compound way better than this. If you're running a business, your your rate of compounding would be way ahead of this. You don't need all this. But if you're working job, why are you doing it? If just to multiply your money and 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 you know get comfortable early on in your life, that's all that that's all that the purpose is. So there is no excuse of you know not really being interested. It's not a choice. It's not Are there religious. any weird things you heard about investing in stocks uh, when you spoke to people? Like these are some myths that were like, you know, oh my God, I didn't think this was a myth out there kind of thing that you heard. So the first thing is is, is uh, you know, lot of bad uh, examples from the history, right? So a Harshad Mehta case, or uh, a lot of people carry that. right especially someone my generation the young guy would not have any clue about harshad mehta or ketan parekhar and all of that uh but it has taken um a few decades what i would say for the system to become so evolved now a day i mean i really really like the way they have evolved the system uh earlier even for instance uh the stocks that you hold mm. right would be with the broker and there are like ten, tens of brokers right nowadays the it sits inside a government's depository so even if a broker goes bankrupt tomorrow it doesn't you are not going to get affected at all right and the other things in place is that if there is some money lying with the brokerage every month they have to if, if that money is unused it will come to your bank account so the government over so many decades has come out with lot of solid systems uh and earlier there was a lot of mistrust mm. around stock market and for very valid reasons i don't blame them at all for very very valid reasons and it has been happening even till last 5 6 years back where some crooked brokerage uh went belly up and and a lot of people lost money right and that is ridiculous uh, but it has happened it has happened uh and that's another and the other problem is some of people even you know my age if you have seen that back off company they'll back out completely uh but it's not that bad uh, right now there are a lot of very good systems and processes in place uh where the money is actually safe right so how do you go about selecting the right mutual fund manager so you so, so there is only so much you can do right so the only thing you can do is something very quantitative now you're not going to go and find who the mutual fund manager is how well he has done in the past what's his background i mean how much are you going to research right you can't do that so what the way, what has worked for me is i only look at the performance past performance of that fund one year three year five years 10 years and make a comparative list uh, and i have a very exhaustive a spreadsheet but mm. that's for a different day right uh which has 10 years history of every fund which has a 10 year old history mm. so for example if there are 20 large cap funds that have and i don't invest in anything that doesn't have a 10 year history mm. so that is another, and this is again something that is my rule yeah. i'm not i'm not preaching it at all but i don't invest in anything that doesn't have a 10 year performance history i am okay to you know lose out on some new hot shot thing that has just come and becomes huge in one year i'm i i'm 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 happy not to be on it i don't look at anything that doesn't have a 10 year history because that gives me some confidence and some basis to make an assumption because my all my all my techniques are quantitative mm. 
So I need some sort of a mathematical base to, I, I don't understand qualitative. I mean, I'm not a trained finance guy. I have no understanding of, you know, uh, I, I don't even know how to read and interpret a balance sheet. I can read a balance sheet, but I don't know whether I know how to interpret a balance sheet. I don't have that background and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, the only thing that, that I know is, is numbers. So I try to bring the problem to my domain and fix it uh, and, and then, uh, you know, fix it using what I know. So I don't want to get into something that I don't understand. For example, which companies are they, are they selecting and what are the fundamentals of that company, whether they'll be active. I don't care about all that. That's, that's not my expertise. I understand numbers very well and I can do my number crunching very well. So for, as far as mutual fund uh, concerned, I just look at performance. One year, two year, three year, five year, ten year and, and you will get a hang of it very, very quickly. So at least the least you will you will end up doing is being in the median, mm. right? Mm. You will not you may not be on the very top of it every year, but you will not be at the very bottom. Yeah, and the risk. and the numbers that I talked about, the twenty two percent in small cap is of median index. Is of median is a mid level. Uh, the the other ones have done thirty percent. Well, Rajneesh, we talked about compound. First thing is we talked about how to look at money and why it's important to get into investment. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the first and the most important. So if, if that's something that resonated with you, we're going to share this Excel and the whole episode is available. I think we covered everything from understanding compounding to creating a portfolio, a basic portfolio, evaluating risk and inflation. Yeah. And the discipline that's required. Yes. He's kept it as simple as we can. I mean, it's really simple. Uh, I think I think all, all I ask is for you to give 15 minutes to the spreadsheet. Yeah. And if it excites you, then, you know, there are, there are, you know, there are so many possibilities. And feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help. So if we have, what, Five, ten people who have tried the Excel yeah. and would like to have a follow-up conversation. We can do to that. set up one where Rajni should be answering a whole bunch of these. And if that's a buddy system that really makes you work, let's figure that out as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Rajni, thank you so much. Thank you, much. thanks so much. Thank thanks for so thanks I for calling me. I just realized, me. I say for close to, I think I can, I, I didn't go this route for at least a, uh, Five years before my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there were other assets yeah. that I put my money in. But uh, yeah, I wish I knew you before. You. Yeah, I mean, the, this systematic thing is, is just wonderful, right? Yeah. Uh, and these are things that people know about, right? So in the US, uh, this, this mo if you would have heard of a 60-40... A portfolio there where 60 percent goes into stocks and 40 percent goes into bonds mm -hmm. <coughs> because there bonds are truly negatively correlated with stocks there stocks go down bonds go up some people just do that 60 percent in 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 their main index which is s s p 500 40 yeah. percent in bonds mm -hmm. just keep rebalancing re they even have products which do this so all you have to do is, is is pay them every month and you don't even have to think about doing this oh every year I have to rebel, nothing. You don't have to do anything, just keep paying them and you'll be fine. Most of the people do that. Most of the people do that. So, yeah. So if there are any women who have watched this, want to do this, I think that's something we should take up even more because... I, I can see more men coming into this, but if there are more women coming in, I'd love to see that change happen sure. here as well. And yep. children, if there are kids in as early as 18, 18 is when they start? When it's allowed? Well, uh, as far as I know, you can have a brokerage account if you have a PAN number. I'm not sure whether there is a, uh, I'll have to find out whether you can start investing even before 18. Okay. I don't see why you can't because you have a PAN number as, 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 a, as an infant. So, yeah, you can. I think you can. There's no reason why, yeah, why they will not let you do that. It's become rich, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you okay. so much. Thank Rish. you. Thanks.